Hey everybody, thank you for uh, coming out to the Q&A. Thank you for watching a uh, wonderful documentary, Miguelito. Thank you for sticking around. Um, thank you to La Leaf for putting on this virtual showcase. Uh, my name is Ernie Quiroz. I am the head programmer for Cine Las Americas Festival in Austin that was supposed to take place about two weeks ago. Uh, but we're looking into like a lot of festivals, looking into doing some virtual screenings later in July. So if you want to check that out, Cine Las Americas coming up in July. Uh, but we are proud to be partnering up with La Leaf for these virtual screenings. And so they asked me to host a, a Q&A uh, for this film, which I uh, jumped on board. Uh, I've seen a film and loved it. I'm sure all of you loved it and uh, had lots of questions. So welcome and welcome to our filmmaker, uh, Sam Zubareski, all the way from the other side of the globe from Australia. <laughs> Hi, Eddie. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Virtually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and so uh, all of you in chat, uh, go ahead and shoot out those questions. I'll be working those into the conversation. But I want to make sure to, um, to mention that tonight they're going to be, after the Q&A, there's going to be a DJ set, uh, DJ Nolobas, uh, who's going to be doing some salsa music uh, afterwards. So stick around for that. And then also, uh, I think there's a couple more screenings for La Leaf. One tomorrow, a uh, film called One in a Thousand, a film from uh, Argentina that is also really good. So check that out. But anyway, uh, so Sam, let's get into your movie. Um, talk a little bit about this in the film, but talk about coming to Miguelito's music and story because you yourself are a musician. You're not necessarily, you didn't want to be a filmmaker what made you decide, hey, I want to make a film uh, and I want to make it up Miguelito? Well, uh, you know, it's funny you should say that. It, but long story short, uh, I was traveling in Colombia with a good friend of mine, uh, you know, just digging for records and, and really just experiencing culture there. And and I came across Miguelito's record in, in Cali. In Cali, uh, they have such a strong uh, and proud um passion for for collecting music it's a real pride thing and then you know i was digging away digging away and i came across miguelito's record which just was so different to any other uh salsa porto record i'd seen before you know i looked at the credits there was mm -hmm. papa luca of la sonora ponceña um, guys like uh maximo torres and uh you know uh, nelson feliciano and quito velez of el gran combo and i just thought that uh you know, I was really curious about these amazing musicians being involved with the, with this child singer. And, you know, I'd never heard a, you know, it, it was, it, it was, it was grown up salsa. And, you know, I heard it, I heard Payaso, yeah. the song, and I just thought it was beautiful. Uh, a few moments later, a good friend of mine told me, uh, told us, I was traveling with my friend. He told us about the story that Miguelito recorded this album when he was, you know, just 11 was flown to New York by Madison Square Garden and then was run over by a bus, you know, about a year later. And I thought, yeah. you know, what a story, what a, what a story. And I mean, I was always, uh, you know, uh, my, my, my love for, for film and has always been there. And, and I just thought that Miguelito's story was such a great way for, um, for me to tell the story of this culture that I really love and care a lot about. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, uh, I mean, Film, obviously, you look behind you, you have a, a number of uh, media collection there. I see your records and all <laughs> sort of uh, some videotapes and whatnot. So, I mean, your, your, your parents are filmmakers and maybe that sort of, that sort of motivate you of like, okay, maybe I will pick up a camera to tell the story. Yeah, well, look, I guess um, I, I came about uh, filmmaking sort of uh, the long way around, I guess, you know, uh, at first when I was young, you know, I was sort of, I, I, you know, I was sort of primarily interested in, in playing music and, and, and that was really my thing. And then uh, I went traveling uh, for quite a long time and then got into, the, you know, studying about um, culture and, and long story short, I, I just fell into film and, and, and making film. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Here I am. Well, you, I mean, it's a remarkable, uh, you know, for, for a feature length debut uh, film, it's a remarkably uh, mature and uh, a well, well made film. Um, so first time out of the gate, you know, 
<laughs> I would say a home run. Yeah. Um, but talk about, um, have anybody has uh, either um, uh, Miglito's family or uh, has anybody seen the film? Have any, any input from that end? Yeah, yeah. So uh, the film uh, had its world premiere at uh, Cartagena Film Festival last year, which was really perfect for for this film in the sense that Miguelito was a real star there with the, that Hibarito sounding uh, salsa. And uh, and then we went on to, to show the film in uh, San Juan, in uh, in in the Casario, in um, Manuela Perez and uh, uh, Monte Pan, which is where Miguelito's family now, uh, most of them live. I mean, the whole family is about 11 of them. So they're all in different parts of the world, but that was where he spent most of his time, Miguel. And they all love it. They, they were really, um, really happy about how, how things went and, and their, their son and their brother has been, um, you know, it's been legitimized and, and it's been uh, celebrated uh, of his work and, and what he did and who he was as a person. So they're very happy. Yeah. How about Harvey? Uh, has Harvey seen the film? Harvey's seen the film. We had a screening afterwards in, uh, in New York at uh, uh, the um, uh, Natural History uh, wonderful festival there. And um, Margaret Maid, I'm sorry. Yeah, so we had a screening there for all the musicians, yeah. Harvey in New York and everything. It was great. Uh, Harvey has seen it and, you know, he has his reservations about about uh, my form of storytelling, let's just put it that way. Uh, yeah. I hope uh, he will at one stage um, see eye to eye with, um, you know, I felt like I, I was being fair and balanced about the situation. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, no, I, I think you uh, do present a very balanced uh, portrayal of the events. You know, I, I think it's up to interpretation. Um, you know, I, I think on the one hand, Miguelito's family, I, I do feel like maybe they were taken advantage of. Maybe they didn't know fully of what they were going into. Just, and they're inexperienced. This is a whole new world to them. And I think Harvey obviously could have done a better job of preparing them for that. Uh, but I, I, I don't know. I, I, what do you think? I, I do believe that Harvey was essentially acting out of good faith and coming from a good place. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Yeah. I think it's it's really complicated, and, and and life is complicated, and you know very easily, you know, you could see either side being, uh, you know, being a sort of a, a journey of, of one being evil, and but I, you know, I think that you, you quite clearly put it that both sides are easily res are both responsible for, for for their mishaps and what happened, and. I think it's too easy to point fingers at anyone in this situation, which is so complicated. And I think, you know, I think what I understood and what I'm still learning about is the complexities of the relationship between Puerto Rico and, and the US and how that sort of, in a nutshell, sort of goes across in that sort of relationship. You know, like they, they I, I mean, I don't know, I, I, they, 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 they sort of, need each other in a lot of ways they both love each other and there's a lot of complexities about how you know power is abused and how one's used and the other and i think that yeah in a nutshell both probably are a little guilty yeah. but both are right at the same time and you know i think that's I but, made a you know, really strong point to you know, know what? harvey, harvey could have picked up the phone yeah yeah sure but ultimately sure. i i yeah yeah, pick up the phone. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, to his defense, you know, that, that time in New York and in, in the 70s, it was, you know, so many things would have been going on and who knows what was going on in his career and, and, and in his mind and, you know, but I know what you mean at the same time. It's complicated. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. Which I think, uh, going, what I said, it, it's a very balanced story and it leaves it to the audience sort of... Uh, to sort of decide, decide what side they're on, if you will. Uh, question from the audience. Uh, first of all, I say congratulations. Uh, I loved how the film transformed as we were watching it, very unexpected. Uh, can you tell us about the responses that you re received from the audience? Oh, look, uh, 
you know, uh, they're, they're being great. You know, <laughs> um, a lot of people, um, you know, I think, especially in in in, in Latin America and 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 in, um, in in Puerto Rico, for instance, and in of course in Colombia, are really are really honoured uh, and and proud that uh, you know this guy from the other side of the world has come to to make a film about about a story that a lot of guys don't even know that much about. Uh, so there, it's been a wonderful response. I've been really, uh, it's been very emotional and very touching, uh, especially in, uh, you know, in Cali, in Colombia. Yeah. The biggest selection in the, in the um, uh, Feria de la Salsa. And um, it was a huge response there. I was there at the end of last year and, you know, just thousands of people I'd never met before, all just really, really happy and really proud. So, uh, yeah, it was great. It's been great. Okay. Uh, another question from the audience. Uh, they're asking about Searching for Sugarman uh, and yes. maybe how that film inspired this film or, or of uh, connection or, or, you know. Yeah, yeah, that, that link is definitely very apparent. You know, there's been a big, you know, a, a few people have said it's like the Caribbean searching for sugar man. And I think uh, it was a big influence in the film. Uh, I mean, I'd say the two real main influences for me was was the Rodriguez and then also uh, Vin Vendor's uh, Buena Vista Social Club. And I think, I you know, for me, a big part of... Uh, I initially was more interested in just telling the story of... of of the people around the album and the artists around him. Because I, th I thought he was dead. And I thought, yeah. in a way, taking portraits of these different characters that I was really invested in and, and I was really interested in was sort of going to come in that sort of, in that spectrum. And so that was really where I was heading with in the direction of the film. The whole, you know, the whole uh, mystery and, and, and the reveal at the end was really something that came out just by filming and it was all yeah. natural and happened in the moment. But yeah, uh, I was trying not to go too much uh, heavily on the Sugar Man set side, uh, primarily because I, as much as I think that film is a masterpiece and great, I didn't want to want it to just be a story about, um, uh, you know, a mystery or a reveal. You know, this is a film that is really about a culture and about a group of people that are, are really wonderful and, uh, you know, Right. No, I think I think you do do a good job of that uh, of the um, passion for a salsa film definitely comes through and, and we can see it in the movie and we do see a lot of great musicians and uh, that narrative. Okay, another question, another one. Uh, saying great way to make your uh, debut. Uh, do you see yourself doing these kinds of films that focus on a character? And basically what's next? Well, uh, after after the the last sort of run of, of, of the festivals for this film, I, I went on to shoot uh, a bit more in Colombia with some of the guys at the beginning of the film in Cali, the, uh, the record collectors, or as they're known, the Melobanos. And so I'm, I've just been shooting a bit with those guys. Uh, they're, a really strong connection with them and yeah I'm, I'm writing and developing that that's the next sort of project about the city of cali and its relationship with music and these record collectors who are called the melomanos very cool so obviously your love of music again again <laughs> yeah well I, I think this one i mean i don't want to typecast myself too much but it, it sort of fell into it you know like i mean we shot i've shot so much with these guys uh, in the past even on, on miguelito you know, uh, my editor and I, we got the, you know, I think the rushes at the first was about 10 hours that went down to like five down to one, you know, and then it's like a two minute or five minute sequence, I think in the film, but them in itself, I think is a real strong story, which makes, uh, which makes sense. But I've, you know, there's lots of other stories and, you know, who knows what's going to happen now with the, the situation we're in all at the moment, but, uh, yeah. lots more stories. Yeah. No, I, you know, I've been programming festivals for a while and I always feel like uh, Latinx uh, festivals and I always feel 
you can learn so much about a culture from the music and from their food. And so <laughs> I always, whenever I put events together, I always try to combine those three, film, music, and food. And if I can find a great music documentary like yours, that's, you know, half my work is done. So, uh, so yeah, I think music is a great vessel to explore uh, different cultures. I think also it's interesting, uh, you know, uh, when you look at a lot of people who make films about cultures that, are, that aren't their own or their native and how they take, what their take is on it, you know, for, I think, for instance, in Australia, I think there's been a lot of fantastic films made about Indigenous culture here made by foreigners. Yeah. And because they look at it with none of those, um, you know, sort of prejudiced sort of views and it's really, you know, a fresh eye. And uh, for me, it's, it's you know, um, the culture surrounding so also that I'm learning more about it's you know hopefully I can sort of stay true to that you know going yeah. forward yeah no, it's interesting that you brought up uh, Vim Vendors and one of us a social club I think that's a perfect example of someone coming from an outside sort of an outsider's perspective having this different perspective on this music and this culture mm, yeah I agree uh, another question from the audience uh, they're talking about how uh, Harvey in the radio interview mentioned, uh, you know, the reunion of all the original musicians, and they're wondering, has there been any sort of re-release of the LP or any sort of reinterest in the music? And if so, uh, is Miguelito's family able to benefit from any of that? Yeah, we're, we're, we're deep in conversation about that at the moment. Uh, uh, I've been trying to get uh, get the the album re-released, which has been a bit more complicated than I honestly thought. Uh, but there are definitely a few labels that want to reissue it. Uh, and yes, the family will be uh, recouped when that happens. The issue is uh, because uh, the LP went through so many different uh, labels when uh, mm -hmm. Harvey resold his um, rights to Coco Records. Uh, it's actually been quite difficult to try and find now, where the I mean, we've got the rights, but then uh, you know how to redistribute them and to make sure it's all sort of fair and fair. But yeah, when that happens, I'll let everyone know. I can't wait yeah. for it to be reissued, yeah. and I would love to have a fresh. Yeah, because being that, how can people stay up to date on the film? Maybe on, like you said, developments with Miguelito on what you're doing. What's your? Yeah, that's, so we've got a website, miguelitofilm.com, and then all the socials. It's Miguelito Film. Uh, and that's that's the best way to stay up to date with uh, everything Miguelito. Okay, very cool, very cool. Um, let's see. I think we have time for one more question. Let me see the more congratulations from from the audience members. Um, and and once again, thank you so much for for taking. It. What time is it over there? I hope we're not keeping you up late. <laughs> no, no, it's one thirty in the afternoon. It's lunchtime. It's fantastic. This oh, okay. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> but it's tomorrow or it was yesterday. It's it's I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the whole, whole <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh so beyond uh they they want to know about not your filmmaking career but your music career. Uh how can we listen to your music and what are you doing with the with your uh as a musician? Oh, well I um I've got a radio show that's on uh a uh, local radio station here in Sydney, which is called FBI Radio uh, 94.5. And you can check that out every Sunday at 1400 uh, Sydney time, which uh, uh, <laughs> so, well, right now it's what, 8.30 in LA. So LA, yeah, yeah, yeah. So nine o'clock, nine o'clock, Saturday night. And, uh, and I have a radio show where I play lots of different music from all across the globe, a lot of salsa. Uh, that's all been going on there. And you can also check on the Miguelito film uh, socials that I, I update it all the time. Uh, we're releasing, actually, we're going to be releasing soon. A, um, I've been organizing this uh, mix or like, it's, I guess it's like a live stream sort of thing of the, like the Miguelito isolation rumba, where it's about a two hour mix. And it's sort of like, a, I've been watching a lot of guys, DJs do the stream and it's, um, you know, I'm going to make it a bit more interactive with like all my mates dancing in isolation and lots of great archive. And then of course, just lots of great salsa, you know, salsa brava. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, I think that's about enough. Uh, we're running out of, out of time unless we do have time for more questions or 
we throw it out there to Lalif, uh, how we're looking on time. Um, they say we could take one more. So let me look through the questions here and uh, uh, talk a little bit more about, uh, it's obviously a weird time with the festival circuit, but what are the plans for the film? I mean, any other festival screenings lined up or, or, or eventual like home, how, how can, what, what's next for the film itself? Yeah, so uh, we're doing uh, another festival in New Zealand uh, in, in a few weeks called Doc Edge NZ, uh, which is a documentary festival there, and then another festival in Puerto Rico, Cine Europa. That's all that we've got at the moment, uh, and they'll all be digital. And then at the moment, I'm looking for, I'm really looking for a distribution in, uh, in the US and all across the globe. Uh, I've been getting lots of messages from people who really uh, want to see it. And yeah, I would love to make that a reality and happen sooner rather than later. You know, I think it's a great time for lots of us to all be watching fantastic cinema. So hopefully uh, in the next few weeks I can share uh, uh, some good news and a deal and hopefully, yeah, it will be streamed somewhere, available to stream very soon. Well, I'm sure it will be. Uh, film, And I think it's... Uh... You know, in this time, it's a great film to watch with great music and, uh, you know, a, a fairly uplifting story, um, you know, about this great young kid, a tragic end. But I think ultimately, hopefully he can live on through his music. And like you said, hopefully his, we can get this music out there and maybe make a little bit of money for the family and just, you know, have more people fall in love with salsa. That's the goal. That's the goal. More people to fall in love with salsa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so thank you guys uh, for coming to the Q&A. Thank you, Sam. Uh, thank you to Lalif. Uh, be sure to stick around for the DJ set and uh, the rest of Lalif's um, offerings. So thank you so much and uh, enjoy the rest of, uh, of your time in pandemic. <laughs> uh, watch your great films, listen to great music. Okay, see you guys, thank you.